Hello everyone. Welcome to Connie Talk. This is Connie Lang. I'm the Executive Director and General Manager to Kaidin Global Trust Limited, as well as a committee member to the Chinese General Chamber of Commerce in Hong Kong. With over 15 years of experience in the financial industry, we realize that there are many good people who are worth to be interviewed, featured, and also to share some good experience with us about their uh, working journey. So today, as our first elite interviewer, we have invited Mrs. Janice Choi. She's the advisor and legal director to the Samoa Group, as well as the standing committee member to the Tianjin Municipal Committee of the CPPCC. Welcome, Janice. Thank you. According to the 14th five-year plan, one of Hong Kong's major roles is to be East Miss West Center for International Cultural Exchange. Mrs. Choi is definitely one of the best person to speak about the topic. She has been the Hong Kong Philharmonic Orchestra's Board of Governor for more than 20 years and was Vice Chairman for six years. In addition, she is one of the major founders of two performing arts groups, including Opera Hong Kong and the Musicus Society. Serving respectively as founding director for seven years as well as founding chairman for nine years. In addition, she was also the honorary advisor to the Chinese Artists Association in Hong Kong, as well as the board member to the Hong Kong Art Center and the chairman of the Cultural Committee of the Chinese General Chamber of Commerce in Hong Kong. Welcome, Janice, and please do share with us with some of your good experience. Thank you, Janice. Thank you, Connie, for inviting me. Hong Kong has already been an East Mist West Center for International Cultural Exchange and is a world class one. We have one of the best orchestras in the world, Hong Kong Phil, Hong Kong Philharmonic, which got the internationally reputable Gramophone Award, the Orchestra of the Year in 2019. And we also have one of the top 10 art schools in the world, the Academy of Performing Arts. And we have the second largest global turnover of art pieces trading, and is one of the four places where Art Basel stays annually. The edges we have so far to make Hong Kong an a East Miss West International Center for Cultural Exchange are a well-established legal system protecting uh, international property rights, our simple and low taxes, free economy, advanced and efficient services such as legal, accounting, banking and logistics. Well, thank you Janice for the sharing. So what should Hong Kong do to maintain its International Cultural Exchange Center status? Well, uh, having listing the edges Hong Kong has, I must say that Hong Kong has its drawbacks and room for improvement in order to be competitive as International Cultural Exchange Centre. We do not have enough venues for performance and also uh, visual arts and other forms of arts. And also, we do not have enough manpower in cultural sectors such as art administrators, promoters and curators. In the recent years, uh, some new venues were opened, such as a uh, CG Center and a uh, free space. They were opened in 2021. M Plus Museum was opened in 2019. Uh, Museum Palace was opened last year, uh, all in addition to the long existing venues run by leisure and cultural services departments such as the City Hall in the Central, Hong Kong Cultural Centre and Art Museum in Jim Sachery, and Cultural Museum in Sha Tin and other cultural venues uh, run by arts institutes and NGOs such as uh, the Hong Kong Art Centre and the Hong Kong APA in Wan Chai and the Youth Square in Chai Wan. However, we still have long queues for all these venues the facilities of some of them are outdated. Even the recent ones do not have most updated and convenient facilities. Years ago, when I watched an opera in uh, La Scala Theatre uh, in Milan, an 18th century building, 
I was very impressed by the screen on its chair displaying subtitles. Such facility has not yet been seen in Hong Kong in any of the venues. Our drama and opera audience still need to look up or to the right or left for the subtitles. The same facility can also be found in Opera Bastille in Paris, uh, which was inaugurated in 1989. Um, it also has facilities to enable quick changes of sets. I hope all these facilities can be found in the Lyric Theatre complex of West Kowloon Cultural District, which is yet still under construction, as you know. Apart from hardware, we also need software, such as art management teams and administrators, as well as artists and performers. For managing um, the venues, the hardware, we need venue management teams. For exhibitions, we need curators, for performances, we need artists and backstage production teams. For all of them, we need art administrators, including marketing and developing teams. Though Hong Kong APA was set up since 1984, not many of their graduates are hired by the nine major government subvented performing arts groups. Therefore, many performers have been recruited from the mainland or overseas. For art administrators, as there are not enough of them for all the art groups in Hong Kong, the experienced ones change their jobs frequently from one art organization to another, like playing the music chair game. The School of Theatre and Entertainment Arts of Hong Kong APA offers stage and event management program. Other local universities, only six of them, offer art administration programs, and most of them are master degree programs or diploma short courses. So I suggest for short and medium term, the government should support and enable the import of talent and professionals for the cultural sector while for long term, more grants and uh, scholarships should be given to undergrads of Hong Kong APA students for further studies and subsidies be given to local arts groups for providing uh, internship jobs for undergrads and fresh graduates. Further, local universities should be funded for providing undergrad program in art administration and management. According to the 14 5 year plan, Hong Kong has a road to promote Chinese culture. What do you think Hong Kong should do to fulfill the task? Well, that can be done not only by the government, but also by every one of us in our daily lives and on suitable occasions. Let me give you some examples. Um, I've been a member of a consular core spouses group all members of that group are spouses of uh, consul generals or uh, honorary consuls of foreign countries in Hong Kong. I also sit on a committee. In the past, the group organized meetings regularly almost every month, hosted by some of the members in turn. On one occasion, consul general, a Japanese consul general's wife, uh, host a lunch meeting at her home and she invited a Japanese designer, a kimono designer, to give a talk on kimono and a few uh, pieces of kimono were displayed. On another occasion, a Indian consul general's wife also did something similar at her home with Indian national costume and also at some meetings, the hosts introduce their country's cuisines uh, or um, uh, traditional um, culture. Well, that gave me the idea of inviting them to perform uh, Chinese cultures at the annual celebration dinners of International Women's Day organized by the uh, business sector's women in Hong Kong. So, 
On uh, one occasion, uh, you know, for one of the dinners, I hired a Tai Chi master to teach some of them Tai Chi and invited them to perform on the stage in um, martial arts, Chinese martial arts costume. They were very happy about that. And uh, even after the performance, they still continue to practice it at home. Mm, yes. And also the next year, um, I taught them to sing a song uh, in Mandarin and in Putonghua, which I, I, I think you also know. Uh, that is the moon represents my heart. They like it very much and enjoy singing them, uh, singing the song on the stage. Uh, for another year, the theme of the dinner uh, was qi pao. But none of them had any qi pao because they just arrived. I mean, uh, the spouses of the council generals. Mm. So I hosted a lunch meeting at my house and they invited those uh, of them uh, who were interested in performing at the dinner to come. And also a couple of uh, qi pao designers. And uh, uh, during the lunch, I let them introduce what they have designed and uh, let the ladies choose their desired designers among them. So after the matching was done, the ladies contacted the designers for making their qi pao. Well, finally, we have the qi pao catwalk. And it was a great success. And uh, their council general husbands were all there, standing up, taking photos, and cheering. <laughs> well, these are only a few examples of uh, you know, the ways of promoting Chinese cultures. There are still many other ways of doing that. My husband founded many cultural centers overseas. At these cultural centers, local students uh, there, learn Chinese cultures such as the language, songs, uh, martial arts, and also music instruments. A few years ago, when the then chief executive, uh, Mrs. Carrie Lam, visited Hanoi, Vietnam, she also visited the cultural center. When she chatted with the students there in Putonghua, she thought they were from the mainland because they spoke so well in Protonghua. That's very good. Mm. Last December, our family foundation organized a cultural event at the Hong Kong Palace Museum. The event was called Thousands of Miles of Rivers and Mountains at the Palace Museum, where there were performances of Dun Huang dance, Wu Qing, and Chinese chamber music, as well as broadcast of thousands of miles of rivers and mountains symphony by a Western Philharmonic Orchestra. Many consul generals and heads of the foreign chambers of commerce were invited to the event. They were all very impressed and pleased by the Chinese cultural performances at the events. And uh, I think that's another way of promoting Chinese culture. After the pandemic, Hong Kong is now fully open again and welcomes you to come and visit us. The Hello Hong Kong campaign has many different initiatives to encourage you to come and visit us and also to share with us with your culture's heritage. So without any hesitation, please make your trip and come and see us very soon. This is Connie Talk and we look forward to seeing you in our next episode. Thank you.